Hello. So in this uh, lesson 6b, then we continue the theme of um, economy-wide modeling, uh, but, uh, but now move on to this kind of computable general equilibrium approaches. And, and similarly, I will also briefly talk about integrated assessment uh, uh, models. So unlike the unlike the input output tables and input output analysis which is very very uh, data driven in the sense that it's based on the system of national accounts uh, these uh, computable general equilibrium models or or applied general equilibrium models then typically then then draw more on the uh, economic theory but on the other hand uh, have a more more stylized approach to like for example uh, what kind of uh, how many industries are considered, uh, and uh, and and relying more on the on the computer simulation rather than on the on the data. So here is a very very simple illustrative example taken from the permanent al textbook. Uh, so a computable general equilibrium model we can think about it as a consisting of uh, a number of equations, uh, typically much larger number than 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 in this example. But uh, typically, then in these kind of kind of uh, models, we have a, as I said, a more limited number of industries. So, for example, we could have just two two sectors, some kind of uh, clean sector and dirty sector. That would be a typical example in a in a environmentally motivated uh, CGE type uh, type modeling. So then, these uh, equations they they include, for example. Uh, some kind of utility functions that that, that then then uh, lead to some kind of demand for commodities. Then we have some kind of production functions, uh, and perhaps we have some kind of uh, endowments for the resources, and and maybe maybe these can be also also um, endogenous in the sense that uh, that capital investment depends on on the on the economic growth. And importantly, as, as the name suggests, there, there are also such kind of uh, equilibrium conditions that, uh, that uh, in the model or, the, or, the, or this kind of economy represented by this kind of computable model, then the economy is in the equilibrium that, that, that labor markets are in the equilibrium, capital markets are in the equilibrium, um, uh, commodity markets are, are in the equilibrium. So, so everything, everything like works like uh, like uh, economic theory would uh, would just suggest without any kinds of uh, any kinds of frictions or 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 inefficiencies. So, so here is this kind of just a simplified example, just to just to give you an idea that we have some kind of uh, uh, system of equations. So, so then this next table then then also I think uh, relating to the similar example then then tries to illustrate how this kind of uh, what kind of results this uh, CGE model can can generate. So here we have these uh, four different columns. There is uh, a base case A, base case B. Uh, so so like like in the case of the the um, input output analysis. We can then then use the CGE models to to generate some kind of counterfactual analysis. So so in the, there is this kind of uh, uh, scenario where we would consider fifty percent emission reduction, and and so so we we can then make this kind of uh, environmentally driven policy scenarios and see what happens to the economy. And as the rows of this table, uh, then then there are there are different prices. Uh, there are there are then then uh, then uh, inputs. What, then we can look what happens to the GDP, what happens to the consumption and uh, investments, and also if there is this kind of environmental um, environmental aspects taking into account. There's probably some kind of energy consumption and probably also emissions. So so then then this kind of uh, um, model can give some some kind of computer simulation that what would happen if if a certain kind of policy uh, policy measures are are implemented so compared to this kind of uh, industry level granularity of the input output analysis the cge models are more stylized that there's typically uh, just a very few uh, broader sectors of the economy 
and then then uh, then it's not so not so not so data driven however then then it can capture some kind of other other aspects that the input output analysis uh, cannot really 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 handle and of course the cg models then uh, depend on certain types of uh, like uh, like functional specifications if i go to the previous uh, example so then then we need to specify uh, somehow for example some some uh, production functions and uh, and utility functions or some kind of demand uh, uh, demand and supply relationships uh, and and there are some kind of parameter values that need to be then then specified so in this kind of uh, very large economy wide model it's it's uh, difficult to empirically estimate each and every parameter so very often the parameters are calibrated so that the, so that the model uh, in the absence of some kind of policy intervention the model would generate somehow similar kind of kind of uh, results as we observe in the uh, in the real world so so this is the this is the the principle. So as I mentioned, it's of course possible to then also uh, include some kind of environmental aspects to the to the um, uh, CGE or, or similar type of modeling approaches. So so there is different different uh, terminology varies, but uh, but uh, but uh, there is of course some kind of trade off that how how fine. Uh, details this model is is able to take into account so uh, there can be this so, so called bottom up approaches which are very rich in terms of uh, uh, details uh, of, often in, in like driven by the for example engineering insights uh, or environmental and ecological models but but if you want to be very detailed in terms of the um, e ecological or engineering parts then uh, necessarily then then uh, the economic part cannot really cover the the entire economy or entire each and every every industry in such a detail so typically then this kind of bottom up approaches are um so called partial equilibrium models so they only for example consider certain sector not not the entire economy but but certain sector i don't necessarily take the that kind of um um wider impacts uh, uh, or some kind of like multiplier effects into into account then the so-called top-down approach is start from this kind of like like aggregate level the 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 model of the entire economy and the general equilibrium but then uh, then there is not so not so easy to then then include a, a very rich set of uh, ecological or engineering details to the to the model so so therefore there are there is a wide variety of different uh, different uh, models and modeling approaches that uh, that uh, may be zooming in certain aspect of the of the economy or the environment and then having more stylized uh, representation of the of the other relevant parts so so the next uh, slide illustrates uh, uh, here is a list of, of alternative uh, uh, alternative uh, computable general equilibrium or integrated modeling approaches uh, that uh, that have been used to assess the marginal abatement costs of of attaining the the um, Kyoto target. So so this refers to the climate policy, and. Um, perhaps it could be said that the 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 kind of golden age for the 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 climate modeling was in the late 90s uh, early 2000s when the when the kyoto protocol was uh, was a hot topic and uh, there would be different many different uh, models and modeling approaches trying to uh, assess uh, that how how costly it will be for the economy so so this table again adopted from the permanent al textbook but based on the ipcc report from the year 2001 indicates this kind of uh, uh, what kind of um, estimates alternative modeling approaches will would have have yield for the for the for the marginal abatement cost of of uh, carbon dioxide and um, as you can see there is uh, there is uh, more than a dozen different uh, different models cited in this 
IPCC report. So there are some some kind of um, broader conclusions that can be done with based on this kind of we could call it a meta analysis of of different reports. So there are there are three basic scenarios in this in this all all, all almost all modeling approaches. So so the first scenario is is no trading. And then, depending on the model, then then uh, there's also like some kind of geographical uh, differences between the USA, Europe, uh, uh, Japan, and uh, Canada, New Zealand, uh, Australia, I believe. And then the second scenario is that that there is trading of CO two emissions between Annex One countries, and then the third scenario is the so called global trading of emissions. And as you can see, basically all models are suggesting that uh, that the marginal abatement costs would be would be at lowest if global trading of the of the CO two emissions was uh, was allowed. And uh, so, if the trading is uh, is restricted to just these uh, uh, rich countries, which form this annex one of the of the Kyoto Protocol then the marginal abatement costs increase compared to this global trading scenario. And then if there is, there is no effective trading, these uh, different models uh, yield quite high, quite high marginal abatement cost estimates, uh, which vary to some extent uh, between, the, between the different uh, uh, regions. So that's that's a, a general conclusion that can be drawn from this that the, that the trading of emissions would help to uh, help to lower the cost because uh, because then uh, these abatement efforts would be would be concentrated in those those regions those countries those industries where the abatement would be would be least expensive. So. Another conclusion that we that we can can see from this that uh, especially in the no trading scenario, there's huge variation depending on which which model we we would uh, we would look at. Uh, so, for example, if you if you look at the second column for Europe, uh, then this kind of abatement costs uh, at lowest. There is this world scan model suggesting uh, twenty US dollars per ton of of CO two. Uh, ranging up to six hundred sixty-five uh, dollars per ton, so huge variation depending on the depending on the models. So of course the models uh, uh, they 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 differ in terms of the modeling strategy, what kind of uh, um, what kind of uh, details are taken into account, as well as as certainly also this kind of underlying model parameters can can differ a lot. So we see quite huge huge differences, especially in this no trading scenario uh, across regions. So I will continue then in the next uh, video lesson on this uh, economic cost of the, of the Kyoto Protocol. See you then, bye-bye.